So, it turns out that the hypothesis space constituted by linear predictors is sometimes too small or too restrictive. So if we consider the simplest case of having only one single feature, so the feature vector reduces to one single number, number of features is one, then with this linear hypothesis space we only can represent straight lines if we plot on the x-axis the feature value and here the predicted label value so we can change the weight to get different lines, straight lines but beside a straight line we cannot do much therefore we sometimes need to consider nonlinear hypothesis spaces and one example for a nonlinear hypothesis space is obtained by decision trees. A decision tree is like a flowchart representation of a map. So we start with the feature at the input and then we apply tests, so-called tests on the feature. For example, we test is the feature larger than some number w1. If yes, we go left. So this here is the yes branch. This here is the no branch. And then we continue with further tests. So we could say is x larger than w2, some other number. And this is a fixed constant. So w1 might be 3, w2 might be 10. And at some point we stop with tests. So here we go left if x is larger than w2 and right if not. And then when we stop testing we end in so-called leaf nodes. So this is a leaf node and the leaf nodes correspond to output values. So here we say uh, we might say y hat equals 2. Here in this leaf we set y hat equals 1 and in this leaf we set y hat equals minus 2. And this decision tree here represents a particular predictor map. So we can also represent it or draw the map here. So on the x-axis we draw the feature. This is the single feature. And the y-axis has represents the values of the predicted label predicted label y hat. And then we just have to follow these tests. So the first test tests if x is larger than w1, which is 3. So here is something happening. If it's not larger than 3, so small or equal than 3, we end up in this leaf node. So we end up in y hat setting y hat equal to 2. So this is this segment here. Then, if x is larger than w1 or 3, so 3 is w1, and then we have another important point at w2, which is 10. So if x is larger than w1, but not larger than w2, so this is this area here, we are in this, we obtain this leaf node, which means we set y hat equal to 1 and then there is this leaf node here which means x is larger than w1 and larger than w2 which gives us y hat is equal to minus 2 and the set of all such nonlinear uh, predictor maps, so this represents a predictor map, which is obtained by varying w1 and w2, gives us a space of predictor of nonlinear predictor maps. And this is a again another choice for a hypothesis space. So the elements of this hypothesis space are different 
decision trees which share the same structure, so the same test nodes and the same sequence of test nodes, but the test values or the threshold values W1 or W2 are different for the different elements in this hypothesis space. So this decision tree might be obtained for W1 equal 3 and W2 equal 10. We have another predictor map obtained by this decision tree, but using W1 5, W2 equals 20. And we can basically identify each element in this hypothesis space by two numbers, W1 and W2. So this way we obtain a nonlinear, a space of nonlinear predictor functions, and each predictor function is characterized by a flowchart-like representation, which is called a decision tree.